Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Creatives Chat. Peter, tell everyone who we have on our show this week. Rusty, I'm super excited. Our guest is an incredibly passionate self-love and energy coach with over 10 years of experience. She's assisted her clients heal from the past, let go of fear and overcome not feeling good enough into living an aligned life of receiving more joy, love, and abundance than they ever thought was possible. We have Alexis Nee, self-love and energy coach, coming on board today. Join us as we chat about who knows what. Streaming from Retro Earth Studio and brought to you by WeAreHistorically.com Conscious Human Apparel and Learn to play jazz piano like a pro by a pro with Jazz Piano Pro Essentials at jazzpianopro.com. Everybody, let's meet Alexis. Oh, and Alexis, thank you so much for coming on Creative Chat. How are you doing? Amazing. How are you going? I'm doing pretty well. I can't complain. I just have a quick question for you, and then we'll just get this started off. Someone who is all about being your own best cheerleader, how does what does that really mean to you? Let's just get it going. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, this is my jam, right? So I believe in, I fully, fully believe in self-love. Like that's, that's yeah. like completely my jam. But my definition of self-love is completely different to like, you know, affirmations and massages and all that crap. What I truly believe self-love is, is having the courage and confidence to be yourself. So I think how the cheerleader works into that is just having, it's, ha it's being brave enough to just be you and just owning it no matter what that looks like and feels like for you in that very moment. So if you're tired, be tired. If you're afraid, be afraid. But it's owning how you feel. It's owning what you want to say. It's owning how you think. It's owning what you want to wear. It's owning how you express yourself. And it's just being as authentic AF. <laughs> I love it. And it makes so much sense because I think that's one of the, the first characteristics you really get from people who have gone through that journey of self-healing and self-love and appreciation, really just that transform that's transform transformative journey that we go on is you're able to really take a stand and speak your opinion and your voice. And I love how you put it powerfully vulnerable and authentic. Like, Oh, how did you come into that? Cause that right there is just like, Ooh, that's, that's someone who sees it, who lives it really. Okay. So, my story is that uh, I am a crazy powerful empath and all my life I've been told I'm too sensitive, you're a crybaby, you're too emotional and then mm. I felt I was miserable for years and then I started to own it. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm really, really sensitive and I'm really, really emotional but my superpower is that I can feel all my emotions and yours and I can feel everybody's emotions. I can feel everyone's energy. I can pick up on energy and emotions from people, places and things and that doesn't make me weak. That doesn't make me a crybaby or that doesn't make me that doesn't make me a freak or anything. It makes me it makes me a superhero. It's honestly like the way I think about it is like X-Men, right? Like before Cyclops, the guy with like the razor eyes, before any of the X-Men knew that they were super like that they were X-Men, that they were superheroes, that they were powerful. Like, like the Avengers, they thought that they were freaks. That they, they thought that there was something yeah. wrong with them. But when they learned how to use their powers and they learned how mm. to use their powers for good and they learned how to use their powers to make a difference, to serve people, to really, really help raise the vibration of the planet and really just embrace being themselves, then that's when they truly became so incredibly powerful. And the more that they started to do that, the brighter they, they, they shone their own light was it's like, for me, it feels like, and this is what I say to my clients, it feels like you're standing on a stage and you literally light your candle. And because you light your candle, everybody else in the audience has the courage to light their yeah. own candle too. Right. Mm. So it's giving us, for me, it's all about giving yourself permission to just be you. And when you do that, other people are like, well, shit, if she can do that, I can do that too. I love it. I love it. Then you just dance in your dance and everyone starts to pick up. Exactly. <laughs> well, right there in terms of making a difference, when did you make that shift of really owning your powers, really owning that, like that unique aspect of yourself, which is like, no, this is me. This is it. I'm going to, I'm going to flourish. I'm going to water that, see where it grows. Okay, so uh, it's, been, it's been like a lifelong journey. I've been obsessed with personal development for, for ages. Um, I've been in personal, like I've been, you know, in the personal development world. I've been a course whore. I've been like learning, growing, and like li literally doing all those things. I bet you like so many people listening are resonating. They're like, yes, yes. I bought every course. I read every book. I listened to all the podcasts for um, 
like over 12 years, right? I've invested like 60K, over 60K myself because I wanted to learn how do I fix me? And in the process of fixing me, how do I actually do something that's meaningful? How do I actually make a difference in this world? How do I actually get to help people? And what I, and after learning all of that and investing all that time, energy, effort and money into myself, this Mm. is like going to sound so ridiculous, but I realized the only way for me to do this is to just be me. Mm. Is to just be authentic. Is to just own the fact that yeah, I I I'm a really sensitive person, and I love being vulnerable. And I think yeah. there's so much strength in that. And vulnerability mm. is sexy AF because some for someone to literally get up on stage on camera or whatever, or just to bear their soul to you and go, yeah, this is me. Take it or leave it because I feel good enough the way that I am, and it doesn't matter what you think or feel because I'm just me. So. Take it or leave it. Love it. Well, it's so it's so true though. I think of how much we live our lives worrying about the judgments and assumptions of others. And that's probably one of the first things that I try to point my different like clients and students towards is judgments are probably the most insane thing that we live by in society. Because in truth, it doesn't matter what we say, it doesn't matter what we do, someone's always gonna have their own perspective of you. So just be you. Like, that's the only thing that you can worry about in truth. Like, so be happy with yourself, speak your truth. And I think that's kind of the thing as a society is there are a lot of people out there that just don't feel comfortable in their own skin, speaking their own truth. I just, I mean, I'm just curious in terms of your own journey, that self-love, when did it start to transition where it's, you're taking these things away from the external and you're no longer diving deep into the classes, the class, the class reward. I love it. It's so ridiculous, but I love it. But it's just all these different classes. Like, and then you finally say, no, it's not about the stuff that's going on out here. It's about what's going on in here. Like when did that switch of just like that aha moment be like, Oh, it's always been here. If there was one. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm just like, which one was it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I truly believe your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. And I went through um, my dark night of soul lasted for ages. It was like two years. It was intense. It was like suicidal depression. And, you know, I, I, like, I really believe that when you go through a breakdown, it means that a breakthrough is coming. And I went through a state, a period of my life where like, it was like my identity, like crashed. Like I was in a Six year, I've always been, you know, like the good girl, the relationship girl, the perfect daughter, the perfect like whatever, right? Like I tried to be, I tried so, and I'm Asian. So it's like, you know, I even studied law because I thought it would make my family proud. I I was so bored. Oh my God. And I just, you know, I tried so freaking hard. And then mm. I remember my mom said to me when I, when I, when I left law, I, I was so afraid to tell my parents. And I told my mom and she was like, I just want you to be happy. And I was like, okay, okay. All right. All right. And it was, it, it, it there was never a massive moment. It was for me, it's, it's about baby steps. It's about every single yeah. little moment, but the biggest like aha moment was, um, okay. So <laughs> my world crashed down a few years ago. Like I was in a six year relationship. I thought he was like my forever love my life, blah. And, um, that relationship ended and, you know, he sought company with another and, you know, no, no blame or shame about it. Right. Like these things happen. And then my work, like I was working in corporate finance. Can you, can you imagine me in a suit? Like, yeah. oh, right? like no, I have purple hair, I have purple eyelashes <laughs> for a reason. And um, I was working in corporate finance and I was always, cause I was like a perfectionist. Right. So I was, the, I was the person that people created jobs for. And in, on the 12th wow. year, my manager said to me, she's like, I think you're medically unfit for this job. And I was like, oh my God, what does that even mean? And I failed my performance review. It was the first time in 12 years. And you know, so that, that, that they all happened at the same time. Wow. But I was from the outside looking in, I thought like, I looked like I had it all, right? Like I, I had six figure salary. I had properties. I had car. I had like like materialistically, I looked like I had everything. I had relationship, friends, family, everything. But I was miserable. I was, mm. I felt stuck. I felt lost. I felt trapped. I felt like my life had no purpose, had no meaning, had no soul. But I was doing so much. I was learning. I was, I was volunteering with kids. I was like, you know, feeding the homeless, like volunteering in kids' hospitals. I was, I was doing all of that, trying mm. to fill up a hole with, inside of me. 
And then when all of that happened at the same time, I remember I was like lying on my bed crying and I wanted to die. And I don't say this lightly because, you know, suicidal depression, it, it's tough. Yeah. And the dying of the soul is like, it's, it's literally hell. But I remember yeah. I just received like, download after download it was like all these channels and it was just it was like poetry that was like pouring out of my soul and it was I was like writing down how I felt but I wasn't writing it for me mm. I knew that I was writing it for somebody else I was writing it for the person that I was going to help because ah, the reason why I was going through that was to help somebody else wow so mm. That's beautiful. And thank you. No, and thank you for expressing yourself and being open about it. Because I think it's that type of journey through the darkness that it takes a lot of courage to come out. And whether it's received through grace or just our own kind of natural intuition. It's one of the most profound moments when we see people pull themselves back and receive that grace to come back from that dark space and then transform that fear, the tensions, the doubt, the negativity into love. And to see that poured inwards, it's really beautiful to see. And that's why I vibe with you. When, when we got introduced to you, I was just like, oh yeah, this person's all about that energy. Like I can feel it. Like, you know, and it's authentic. And I think that's the thing that you can really tell is that's someone who really understands the importance and value of love. And especially when you really fill up your own cup, how effortlessly it just overflows. So it's cool to see that, you know, <laughs> in terms of the, well, because everyone always has their own, I feel like it's like the, their own mystical experiences in these moments where it's just like that, are you going to go down that path or are you going to really transform? And we've all experienced people in those negative cycles that just kind of keep that downward spiral. But to have that point switch where you take it to a point of like really transforming and healing and just unfolding, whew, I'm sure life just started picking up, but you know what I mean? I know like it's and I it's so insane how quickly flow moves when you go into trust and surrender and it's so unbelievably hard to like not have a 10-step plan and not know exactly like what to do and where to go but honestly like the power of intention and the power of just following your heart's desire and I know it mm. sounds so, so cliche but <laughs> if you're in alignment like everything flows like it's like this this interview like you know like we were talking before like how it literally I how I fell into your lap and how this fell into my lap and it was just it's magical like life becomes magical when you're in alignment because it's like the right person the right place at the right time again and again and again and again and it's just <laughs> it's unbelievable and it all like for me like I believe it truly all comes when you're just being really authentic when you're being really honest with yourself and you're giving mm putting that out to the world mm. Mm. I feel it I feel it well it's I think that's one of the things that we overlap in the sense of we're all as I see it we're all different pieces to this great puzzle called life right yet the only way that we can truly give the full act of grace or gratitude for this experience is to give our uniqueness to the world and I think that's one of the, the biggest disconnects we have as a society right now is there's so many people living the lives of others they're holding they're living their life and their past pains they're living under these assumptions these judgments and yeah i'm right there with you i mean when that identity drops it just crumbles away it's a uh, pretty powerfully uh it's opportunistic but it's incredibly painful you know and i think that's the thing is i really like how you said that the trust and surrender it's like once you really dive into that and commit yourself to that like life is just like they get it okay here's everything you ever wanted <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And like what I found was a, uh, it's so crazy how easy it is. Like I, I feel like we live so mm. much in here and we don't spend enough time in here in our hearts. And it's literally as simple as going, well, how does this feel? Does it feel heavy or does this feel light? Because if it feels heavy, it's not right. Ooh. It's like red flag, like red light, right? Like heavy red light. But when it feels light, it's like green light. Go, go, yeah. <laughs> do that thing. Well, I mean, you can understand that as like an empath and really having to learn how to swim in the ocean of energies <laughs> is being able just to discern what's you and what's not you is something that yeah. I found is probably one of the most overlooked, but really the greatest tool that we could all learn is like what energetic influences are you? What emotions are yours? How are you taking on others and really protecting that sense of self? 
So how did you learn to like navigate this like emotional realm? Like, I wait, what is this empath thing? Oh my gosh, I'm an empath. This makes so much sense. Oh, so my mom is an energy healer and she's Ooh. quite different. Like, so I feel emotions. She feels like physicality. So the other day I messaged her, I was like, mom, I've done everything. This headache won't go away. She messaged me back, like, you're very dehydrated. <laughs> so I can feel you and you're dehydrated. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so she, she was my first um like foray into the energy world and then I became wow. obsessed like from from the 16 onwards I was obsessed with learning about our, how energy works how um and so I threw myself a, a thousand percent into learning different ways to connect to source and how to like cleanse my energy cleanse my chakras like I call it like an energetic shower so like mm. every day without fail, I will do all my energy work. I will clean my chakras. I will mm. clean my field. I will clean my aura. I'll protect myself. I'll do everything. But then even after all of that, I will still feel things that aren't mine. And mm. like sometimes, like today, I was quite frustrated because I was like, I've done everything. I've done everything energetically. I've done everything physically. Like, why do I have this headache? And then because, and like there's a, and then a friend walked in, like I'm in this co-working space and a friend walked in. As soon as it, like we started talking, it disappeared. And it was just a really, really, mm. really good reminder that we're here to serve. And what we're going through is it it's not always for us. Most of the time it's for somebody else. Because the, the clear message that I had for her, like I even wrote it down on a post-it note and I gave it to her and I said, clarity and space. Like that's what you, that, mm. that's, that's what whatever is telling me to tell you this is for you and she kind of looked at it and she 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 looked at me she's like I, I i just i just feel like crying and in that moment my headache disappeared because the message the the pain and everything it wasn't me it wasn't for me and it wasn't mine it was for her mm. and it was it was for me to relay that message for her and i feel like when we open ourselves up to serve to truly serve we we simply become we become vessels yeah. We're like messages, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. the beauty of it. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> like you said, it's not about us. It's not about, it's not always about us. It's about, well, how can we raise a vibration for the planet? How can we help the collective? Yeah. And how can we heal enough to do so so we can receive that. Mm. Mm. And that's the beautiful the way you said it. I love, I love it when people use the term vessel because it's just like, yes, because the flow is literally flowing through you. Like it's all about reaching that point of just tensionlessness where you can just allow everything to be and just express itself as it's supposed to and really just kick back and enjoy the film. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. See, I'm very curious about that. So, because you said it subtly in your really one of those, like the major aha moment in that dark night of the soul of you realized you were writing for someone else's healing for someone like who was the someone else? Okay. So over the last few months, I've been focusing a lot of my work on helping people through toxic relationships, right? So mm. letting, go, letting go has been a massive theme this year and you know, like your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. So whatever we're going through right now, it's so we can help somebody else. Like that's what I truly, truly believe. And I realize in writing, like I go back now and I, and I like, I, I sometimes I still post a lot of those uh, things that I wrote back then. And it's the somebody else is whoever's drawn to me, whoever's attracted to my energy, whoever needs my help at this point in time. And it's always the craziest thing. One of my, one of my clients um, who I worked with this year he came to a workshop and I was like, how did you end up in this workshop? Like, did you find it on Eventbrite? He said, no, a friend messaged me an hour beforehand and said, hey, you should go to this. And in that split second, he decided to come and then he became a client of mine. Like, it, it's insane how things happen. And then this other, this other client, this is, a fun, like, this is my favorite but funniest story ever, right? I posted a story of myself rollerblade dancing. So it's like literally dancing rollerblades. <laughs> And then he said to me, when I saw that, he doesn't, he doesn't, we don't know each other, right? In that moment, when I saw that story, I was like, yes, I need to work with her. <laughs> We're always being guided. We're always being led. Yeah. And that right there is allowing yourself to receive the grace has been probably one of the most important lessons for myself is just not holding myself back with assumptions and expectations and just trusting life fully. And I, it's very similar to what you said. It's like the moment you really commit yourself to that letting go, to that surrender, life really does just kind of divinely guide you 
So all these dope situations and experiences where you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know I needed to learn this. Oh, cool. I learned this. Different connection there. Different connection there. Like, oh, life is full of abundance when we really commit ourselves fully to ourselves. Exactly. And when we allow ourselves to just be open and we give out, I think like one of the biggest things I always say is like when we give ourselves permission to just be ourselves, like I know it sounds so ridiculous, but it's so true. It's so true. It's like literally you have to make the decision every day. I'm going to choose to be myself. I'm mm. going to choose to be myself. Like someone asked me before, he, like I wear pretty crazy outfits and today's not so crazy. And he said to me, like, how do you decide to wear every day? I looked at him and I was like, I literally get up in the morning and I say to myself, what does Alexis want to wear today? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. Well, it just comes to the point where you're giving reverence to the experience. And I find that that's one of those subtle things where when you finally stop living in the mind and come back to, as I call it, like the throne of the soul, the heart, it's just like magic starts to happen. So when I see someone literally say like the whole purpose of this is to really come back home to the heart and then you can start to really attract and like magnetize things and like charge yourself up and draw everything you want in. I'm just like, yes, this is the truth. Like <laughs> Exactly. Well, I guess that's the question right there is this falling away from the mental identification back into the heart knowing of yourself. How has that journey really kind of helped you in this healing process of yourself and others? I honestly try and live entirely from the heart. Mm. Try to do as little thinking as possible. And it's gotten to the stage where um, I get frustrated if I'm thinking like I, so I, I'm, <laughs> I'm running a raise your self-worth and confidence challenge and I mm. sat there with a notebook and a pen and then I tried on the laptop and I tried to map out everything I was going to say and my intuition my guidance my heart my soul whatever you want to call it my higher self was like just wing it <laughs> again <laughs> wing it and I was like I'm just wing it <laughs> okay decided <laughs> well do you find that yourself like I think one of the things that I've observed lately is when I had these realizations and kind of came back home into the heart, so to speak, the moment I tried to do things back in that kind of analytical, logical mind, it was just so tension filled. Things would just get fucked up. And I'm just like, what? No, I never do that. So I was like, fine, screw it. Let it go. Let it go of everything. And then just effortlessly doing things. I was like, wow, that was really, really good. People really vibe with that. Right. Except because I feel like, hey, so when you when we're trying to operate from the mind, the brain, the ego, what we're doing is we're trying to recreate the familiar and we're literally right. living in a past, living in the known, and that's not being, right? You're not you're not being present, you're not being, you're not being authentic because you're trying to be perfect, you're trying to, you're trying to um you're trying to be the best version of yourself, and that's not real. But when you just open your mouth to speak and you allow your heart, your soul to just pour out and you allow yourself to be in this present moment right here, right now, and you give yourself the permission and you just allow yourself to be, then that's when magic happens. And that's when your energy, your, your aura just goes, Whoa! and you become so freaking bright. And it's just, and people can feel that energy. And at the end of the day, everything's an energetic game. But when you're trying really, really hard, it's like your aura, your field just gets like very constricted because we're either expanded or we're contracted. And when we're thinking, it's really mm. fucking contracted. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the imagination realm. It's like you're only living in the understanding of what the body is experienced. It's just, it causes so much misperception that. <laughs> yes. You know what it's like? It's like, okay, it's like being on a first date, you're trying to think. You're trying to like, you're trying to be perfect. You're trying to think like, so it's like, are you on a first date? Yes or no. Right. And then if you really are like, I'm going like, I'm like, I'm ish dating ish, but like when you are on a date, do you want to be the date version or do you just want to be yourself and have fun? Like, I don't know about you. I just want to have fun. I just want to be right. me. Right. Yeah. If you can't handle this, then you can't handle this at my best or my worst. Yeah. And I think that's the stuff that really gets people is they've spent so long trying to live up to someone else's expectations or living in the standard judgments and persecutions of like the norm, quote unquote, if that's even a thing, you know, that we've become so disconnected from our hearts. 
that there are countless people living in the mind. So when it comes back to this point of helping people really bring out the best versions of themselves, like where do people start if they don't even really know who they are? <laughs> and that's exactly it. That that's where they start. They you get okay, this um you go back home. And where's home and what's home? It's coming back to your soul, your heart, your center, yourself. Yeah. It's not about going anywhere. It's about learning, well, where am I right now? Right? Because mm. I don't like I don't believe in the best version of yourself or the better version of yourself or like, you know, the perfect self-image. That's that's all the mind. The heart yeah. is, you know, like I feel like we're like layers, right? Like we're like onions and we just have all these layers and all these layers are all the negative the negative beliefs, the negative stories, the negative energy, the foreign energy, the stuff that's not ours. But at the core of it, the heart and the soul of all of us, it's pure love. It's yeah. pure joy. It's pure fun. It's pure abundance. And the best analogy I can think for this is look at a child or look at a baby or look at a puppy. Mm. They just want to have fun. They, <sighs> they laugh. They're just pure love. They're so loving. There's no judgments. Yeah. There's no, like, you don't see a baby going, oh, my God, I look fat. No. <laughs> they love the attention. And kids just mm. want to have fun. So at the yeah. at the heart of it, like, we're pure love. We're pure joy. Like, peace, yeah. love, joy. They're the highest frequencies under enlightenment. And, you know, let's be honest, most of us aren't going to reach that in this lifetime. So let's embrace <laughs> peace, love, and joy. Right? Right. I I love that. And it's so funny because I just remember like the first time that like the example came up, it was one of my students who was really upset with like a letdown. And I was just like, just understand that that's just part of the curve. Essentially, like they were in that like baby Buddhahood phase where it's just like they had all these crazy recognitions, awakenings. They're like, oh, my gosh, like I resonate with this. And then like the one hiccup, you know, like that they had going back to old behaviors and patterns. It was like the mind was like, oh, you're back here. It was just like, no, like, don't worry about it. Just keep moving forward. Like allow those energies just to kind of dissipate on their own. Don't invest yourself in them anymore. Because do you see a baby having this existential crisis when they fall over, when they're learning how to walk? It's just like if they operated like in the mind like we do as we age and kind of lose that connection from source, it'd be insane. Everyone would just be crawling around. No one would learn how to read or write. <laughs> it'd just be tantrums all over the place, right? Exactly. It would be like, can you imagine a baby looking in the mirror going, oh my God, does my ass look big in this? No, <laughs> That doesn't happen. Like they, they genuinely just love themselves, but it's because they are love and they, mm. they, there's no walls against giving it. That's why children mm. and babies, they're so loving. They just, they're just full of joy. And it's returning back to that state because when we yeah. do like, that's like authenticity is our frequency. It's our vibration. It's our natural vibrations. The more authentic we are, the higher our vibration. Right. But yeah. our most authentic state is pure joy and pure love. So we just get to be, we just get to have a whole lot of fun being ourselves. Yeah. And like, this is how easy it is. We just get to stop trying. Because when we're trying, we're back in here. We're back in the mind, the brain, the ego. And trying is so trying. It's so exhausting. It's so oh my I love God. it. Yeah. And I think that's something, again, where people just, until you experience it, or rather until you value the experience, you overlook it all the time. It's that effortless being. And I feel like, especially we get those subtleties experientially all the time, you know, like when we're in the flow, when you're having fun, you're at a, you know, you're dancing, you're conversing, it doesn't matter what it is, but like everyone has their own ability to tap into the flow in some way, but it's those moments when we time skip, like so many people take those moments for granted. And I was just like, when have you been your happiest? Like, are you thinking at all? No, <laughs> like there are no thoughts at all. Like, and if you're and if you're having so much fun that thoughts are willing to drop away and you just don't care about it, like that's your base state right there in a nutshell. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I've got yeah. It just reminded me of the, the funniest <laughs> analogy for this. But when you're having an orgasm, you're not thinking, "Oh my god!" You're not thinking about like trying really hard or whatever. You're just being in the moment. So imagine, right? Imagine if we were like being in the moment all the time, like how amazing would life be? Look at kids, right? And that's always kind of the more like deeper philosophical questions I have for these things where it's like, you know, 
you sp- you mentioned like some people, you know, they'll spend this entire lifetime. They won't get it. They won't figure it out. They won't obtain these types of, you know, liberation or enlightening moments. But I feel like we have to return to a point like we have to suffer enough until we come to value what we always were. And mm-hmm. that's where I find that like the return home really starts for people. And I just think it's fascinating for those that have gotten a chance to experience it because it's like, you're young. Like there's a lot, like, I know, like I'm young, like there's a lot of people out there, like, especially from some of the, the elderly clients that I've worked with or finally aged, as I like to say, you know, it's like they're in their nineties and it's like forcibly happening. And that's not a good place to be at where it's like, there's so much amazing human experience that we can live through if we really take this chance and look within early and it's just like, Oh yeah, I'm so happy. There's another tapped in person because one more light in the world just, you know, uplifts everybody. So it's, it's super cool. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Right. And like, I really believe that it's about being, it's the sick and tired. It's when you go, I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired of this. And then from that place, you make the conscious decision. I'm done. I'm so freaking Mm. done with this. It's like when you, it's like when you reach that breaking point of like, yeah, done with this relationship done with eating like crap done with looking like this done with feeling like this and you're like i am going to do whatever it takes there's got to be more there's got to be more and then you deep dive straight into that and it's not even an intention it's not an affirmation but it's like an energetic declaration it's an energetic signature out into the universe where you're like this i am calling in this this is what i want energetically i am i am doing this and when you make that decision even before you've taken action everything's already changed. Like you've already shifted realities. Ooh, I like that a lot. The energetic declaration. Ooh, that's a powerful one. And I really don't think people get it in a lot of ways where it's like the moment, cause you are, I mean, we literally manifest everything, you know, and it's like whatever our heart's yearning for in that moment, it's going to start to attract. And it's that aspect of, you know, like whatever cause law of cause and effect people want to think about it, but it's the moment you actually set your intentions fully. Then life is like, Oh, I heard you. Get ready for some grace. It may not be how you think it's going to happen. but <laughs> Exactly, right? And like I, like, I like to describe intention as this. Like intention equals feeling plus outcome. Because I feel like everyone gets fixated on the outcome, which is amazing. But when you're just fixated on the outcome, what you're essentially saying to the universe is, I don't have this. Because you're, you're experiencing lack. And the universe just gives us, law of vibration works on, law of attraction and law of vibration works on giving us more of how we feel. So if we just focus mm. on feeling really freaking good, that's amazing. It's literally like, okay, when you, when you whenever we think of goals or visions or whatever we want, people are like, yeah, I want the car, I want the house, I want the relationship. But why do you want it? Because I want to feel happy. I want to feel loved. I want to feel joy. Why not? just focus or imagine on feeling that way right now because then like you said right then all the magical divine synchronicities that happen in the most random like whatever ways are going to happen in the most crazy ways i love that i love that Mira, like literally here you go it it's, will. it's so yeah no that just hit different it was a. Uh that aspect of the feeling, the emotional realm, the, the highest really intuitional knowing of ourselves. Like you have to really see that within your own heart radiating out. Yeah. That's a beautiful one. So I guess I could just go right into that one. When did you really start to recognize the power of your own ability to manifest everything like this? Oh my God. I'm going to be so cliched with you right now, but I'm going to like layer it because there's there's a, you know, (laughs) I'm going to be like every other person. Okay. So the secret right but it was deeper than that it was um so it was a secret mixed with heart math so I learned mm. about heart math um I learned about the power of the heart I like I, I I I'm a bit of a science geek so I dove into that like attending Joe Spencer's workshops etc but I've always been I've always been quite positive and mm. um I've always like I've always you know dove into the world of gratitude and had gratitude journals and you know all the all the cliche 3d stuff but I think what what really okay the last two years have been insane for me like I've been manifesting like a mofo and I went from living um like feeling like I was a I was a prisoner in my own cell to living my best life like everyone says to me oh like you're living your best life in Barcelona I literally am I'm so happy I've never been happier in my life like I get I 
And the best thing is I just get to be me. And the other day I realized I set an intention. I set a really powerful intention years ago when I was like a corporate slave. And I wrote this down and I said, and I wrote down, I want to get paid to be me doing what I love. Mm. And then the other day I was running, um, I was running a live challenge and one of my clients wrote like, I just want to be you. And I was like, what? Like, why would you want to be me? And then it clicked. And I was like, that word me. And I was like, oh my God, I'm getting paid to be me. That's so amazing. The full circle moment. (laughs) Right, right. Because, and that's when I realized like, this isn't about trying to help someone with confidence or self-love or with, you know, trauma or neck pain or whatever. This is a just, this is this journey. Like what essentially we're all doing is we're just helping everyone out there to just be themselves. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And that's returning mm. back to heart, to soul. Like how, like helping everyone to just go, you're beautiful the way that you are. You're more than good enough the way that you are. You're fucking yeah. amazing. And you just get to be you, whatever that looks and feels like for mm. you. Right? Like one of my clients was like, I want to wear a dress. And I was like, great, go wear a dress. Go do that. I want to do this. Amazing. Go do that. <laughs> amazing. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it's something that we overlook the power of compassionate living. And, you know, you said it in the sense of, you know, just being grateful and just being positive, but that recognition of like the truest term of namaste, like the the sanctity and divinity between each being, like when you actually recognize that within yourself, it inevitably changes the way you see others in the world. And I think that's the most powerful thing is seeing that game of judgment and separation just end. And then you start to really radiate your own light. And then other people start to get kind of like moth to the flame, like, ooh, that's a little, what are they putting off? I kind of like that. And that's the aspect of this reality, if we want to call anything that, like, that still always mystifies me. And it's always a beautiful experience is just knowing how everything really is grace, whether we realize it or not, and how it brings us to these points of healing and I find that our network here on Creative Chat is always building of the different healers we're working. So I'm, I'm happy to add a person from Spain on the mix with this. But, you know, even just that transition of going to Barcelona, like, how was that decision of just like moving out there and being like, yep, time to do me? Intention, intention, everything, right? I was in, I was in Australia. I was not, I lost so much weight. I'm not a very big person. I lost so much weight. I was like suicidally depressed. My brother was moving to London and he messaged me and he was like, come to London. I'm like, no, I've got, I've, I've got to, I've got to figure out like our finances. Like we've got this car together. We've got properties together. I've got to figure out my life. He was like, come to London. And then, then he, then the second chat we had was we've bought you a ticket. You're coming to London. And I was like, I'm going to London. Okay. And then I was speaking to one of his business partners. I went in December a few years ago and his business partner said to me, I think you're going to be here in March. I just have this feeling. And I was like, I like that. I'm going to be here in March. And then I stayed and then I tried to go home in May and it was like peak COVID time and I could not get home. My flight was canceled. I bought another ticket that was canceled. Like I literally physically could not go home. It was like the universe was going, no, (laughs) I swear on this channel. Yeah, go to, go for it. The universe went, no, bitch, you're staying in London. <laughs> That's how it felt right. I was like, okay, all right. So we went back to my went back to my brother's apartment in London, and then and then it was like summer in London, and we were in this concrete box, and it was miserable, and it was COVID, and Spain was Barcelona was open, and my brother's business partner lived there. So I said to my brother, hey, why don't we go there for the summer, like for a month? And before this intention everything starts with intention right i'd set my yeah. intention the energetic declaration out into the universe although i thought this was going to be in australia so never ever try and predict and control the outcome i i was like envision envisioning a place by the sea within five minutes of yoga studios because i really miss yoga studios within five minutes of the soul of my soulmate tribe because i felt really lonely in london and within mm-hmm. five minutes of, of public transport right like those were my key criteria I shit you not, within three weeks, we're living in Barcelona, within five minutes from the sea, the metro station is at, right outside the, our doorstep, right, like literally, like could not get closer if we tried, there's a bus like around the corner, like, you know, two metres that way, um, there's yoga studios everywhere, 
all my friends live within five minutes walking distance. Like so much so, like they'll just buzz on my doorbell. One time I was like sharing, I was like, hi, what's up? And they're like, do you want to get an acai bowl? Yeah, I do, but I need to put on clothes. (laughs) (laughs) Heads up next time, by the way. (laughs) Exactly. Like it's everything I wanted. That's so cool. That's something right there though, that, that ability to give yourself the opportunity to receive the grace is what I find is always the the tricky part because you could have easily been like, no, I know you bought the ticket. I'm sorry. I'm going to stay here. And then all those opportunities just gone. Exactly. And I believe, I truly believe there's two things, right? There's two paths you can take. So there is wanting something, which is great. You can set the you can set the intention, so feeling plus outcome all you want. But then on the other side of the coin, are you ready to receive? Mm. Right? And in order to be ready to re- receive, it's like this is my giant water bottle. It's like bigger than me. In order to be <laughs> right, you've got to pour out the junk. You've got to pour out the negative self beliefs, the negative energy, the foreign energy, the energy that's not even yours. So you have space to receive. And when it's when it's intention plus being ready to receive, when they meet, it's like mm. firework. Yes. Yes. Now, in that sense of getting ready to to really process and learn the lessons necessary to kind of take these next levels up, what is some of the most important things you've seen in this healing process that people should always try to address first, or if there is okay. anything first? So the first Okay, first two steps is self-awareness and self-responsibility. Self-awareness is only is is going, okay, this is what it this is literally what my life looks like and feels like right now, every single aspect of my life. Right? Mm. And then self-responsibility is owning your shit. It's literally <laughs> saying it's like it's, it's literally like it's like yeah. it's literally going, okay, you know what? Yeah, I I have had a string of bad relationships but that's because I didn't set boundaries that's because I didn't tolerate that's because I didn't say yes when I, when I want to say yes and when I want to say no I enabled it I tolerated it I yeah. didn't clearly communicate and express myself right I you know I was in a job I hated for years because I didn't I, I was in victim mode and I didn't have the courage and confidence to believe in myself and walk away it's owning yeah. your shit. It's literally going, my life is the way my life is right now because of the decisions I made and I'm owning every single part of it. I'm owning everything I've done in the past. I'm owning like how I'm looking and feeling right now and being okay with that because self-love doesn't start with going, oh, you know, I love this and I love this. No, there's shitty parts about yourself too. And it's owning everything, right? Like yeah. no way, anyway form have I ever been nor will I ever be perfect but I own everything and that's yeah. all a learning experience and then it's going okay from this state of me accepting me as I am and all the shitty mistakes I've made and everything I've done now and all yeah. the all the times I didn't set boundaries all the times I was que- queen of people pleasing land all the time right all the times I was like an is- a miserable oompa loompa because I wasn't strong enough to say no and all the times where I didn't listen to my own intuition, I didn't listen to my own compass. Yeah. I own all of that. Yeah. And then from that point, you decide. <laughs> you go, okay, this is what I'm going to say no to in the future. This is what I'm going to say yes to in the future. This is what I'm going to do un- unequivocally. Uh, what, whatever that word is. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. I love that. And. I think that's the biggest misconception of people who have gone on, you know, whatever people like to see it as the spiritual path, this kind of path of healing and unfoldment is they always think that, oh, well, it's just easy for you. It's just easy for you to do that. It's just easy to do this. It's like, well, first off, yes, it's a whole lot easier to be kind and nice and loving than it's ever actually, you know, to be mean, nasty and negative when you really value it and come to realize where it comes from. But it takes so much courage and strength to have that i would say what would we want to even call it like soul development or spiritual maturity to have the tough conversation with ourselves to really end victimhood i think that's because again like so many people get stuck in that and it's almost like positively reinforced nowadays where it's okay to blame other people it's okay to sue everyone else you know don't take any personal accountability like but like to really take that inwards look and look at yourself in the mirror like that 
it's a heavy process. <laughs> like it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Like, well, like I think that's a choice we can make, right? Like we can look at it as yeah, that it's really hard, or we can look at it and go, it's actually pretty funny. Like all the times, like like I feel like owning our shit is literally like going, okay, well. Have you really been the hero of your own story and the main character of your own movie, mm. movie or have you been the supporting actor? Mm. And whose story yeah. are you actually writing? Like, are you are you reading somebody else's? I, I just happen to have this in front of me. You, <laughs> it's like great use of props. <laughs> what else do I have here? Like, are you reading somebody else's story or are you the author of your own story? Because this is your life. You get to choose. And that, that's full self-responsibility. And then you can kind of look back and instead of going, oh, shit, because when, we, mm. when, we, when we're choosing to be in low vibration emotions, like fear, get, guilt, shame, uh, anger, sadness, whatever, like we're staying here. But when we can, like, when we raise the bar, when we raise our vibration, we can kind of look back and go, like, that's why I, I, I can say it like heartily, right? Like I was the queen of self-sabotage. I was like the freaking queen of people pleasing land. It was like, I was the unhappiest minion ever. <laughs> the like, unhappiest was, minion. <laughs> I, like... I was like, yeah. like, and, and I can look back at that now and go, I was totally that person. I was so incredibly submissive. Wasn't even passive aggressive. I was submissive. Mm. I, was, I was like such a big doormat. But that's wow. okay. And now, like, now it's funny. And it, like, I, like, you know, we, we always suppress or we repress emotions. So it's literally like you're, you've got the trash and you're like shoving your foot down it, trying to fit more stuff in. You don't have to take out the trash. Literally, I never took out the trash. I never dealt with my emotions. Yeah. And I like, think that's... I no. Right? It's hilarious when you look at those types of physical examples because it's the same thing in terms of, you know, allowing patterns to repeat. It's almost like we have our hand above the flame on the gas stove and it's just like, no, I can I can keep doing it. It's just going to start dialing up the heat until you move it. It's like, no, this is good. This is cool. You know, it's like you smell the flesh burn and you see yourself dev- like pushing the trash down. I actually really like that metaphor. I'm going to use that, by the way. Uh, it's so funny. Like, we don't do this stuff for anything else. But when it comes to our personal, like, love, satisfaction, you know, personal respect, honestly, we just, we literally treat ourselves so different than we would ever do anything in this physical world. And it's just like, where is the disconnect? Oh, it's because we're not connecting from, we're still up here. We're not being in here. Like, exactly but there's no difference right like if you need to go to the, if you need to do a dump you go to the bathroom you do the dump flush the toilet and it goes there's no difference between that and emotion so are you being emotionally constipated right now chances are most of us yeah we are because we don't want to feel it right but what happens when you don't go to the bathroom when you need to go to the bathroom you get gas you get pain and it gets worse and worse and worse yeah. It's the same thing with emotions. And that's, that's what, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, we, we can look at being a victim. We can look at being a victim as like, yeah, it's, it's really crappy and it's really, it's like literally shit, right? <laughs> or we can look at it and go, yeah, I have been the victim and uh, yeah, I was emotionally constipated and I never flushed the toilet, but um, I'm going to now because it's gross and it smells. Yeah. So and that I'm, just, that willingness to be okay with being happy and being comfortable and having fun with it and just having a laugh about it. I find that like those that have probably dealt with like the wildest adversities and just those, you know, those intense dark nights of the soul. And again, coming back to that path of like self-realization and love and just mm, probably the best senses of humor I've ever met in people. (laughs) <laughs> and like and honestly some like i know myself personally kind of a dark sense of humor where just like no matter what it is like you can always find some humor in it and it's like some people are like oh my gosh like really i'm like oh yeah it's pretty funny like why be sad about it why be upset about it like this is life it is right it's like it's like, okay so like you know relationship patterns always repeat themselves until we break it yeah it's literally like like i, I ran a toxic relationship workshop one day and i was like i realized that i was dating my dad and I'm like, oh. guys, who else is dating their dad? And I was like, my dad's name is Michael. I dated two Michaels. Like, oh my God, right? Like, how did I not see this? And they got along so well. And then I was like, so I was like, guys, in the chat box, tell me, who else is dating their dad? And everyone's like, dating my dad, dating my mom, dating my, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. We get, we get to have fun with it and we get to laugh at <laughs> like, like I was saying, it's, it's a choice. We can look at it as if, as if I don't want to see this and this is really dark. 
Well, mm. I can look at it and laugh because when you laugh, you shift a lot quicker. You release a lot quicker, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. all about how do I shift and transform and release energy like this, like this, like this, because I don't want to hang on to this. Mm. I literally just want to flush the toilet all the time. Constant process renewal, change and exactly. transformation. Keep it coming. Never exactly. ending. Exactly. Energetic showers all the time. <laughs> Well, that right there is so fascinating just to think about it. You know, it's just like, what are you holding on to and what are you releasing? And just the, the concept of life really is that greatest teacher providing us all these moments to learn. And just like, oh, not going to get it yet. Send that back. Replay. <laughs> exactly. And that's what that's what I that's why like I'm so passionate about the self-awareness, self-responsibility piece, because yeah. when we get to a stage where we're like, oh, that's a trigger, that's a pattern, that's resistance, it gets so much faster. And when we mm. realize, oh, my God. Here's another pattern that I've been repeating. Does this serve me? Yes or no? No. Okay, great. I get to release it now. Ooh. And that right there is actually really fascinating because, you know, in those moments too, the quicker we release, the more we get accustomed to that letting go and surrender. It's that natural clearing of the ground where it's all the internal chatter just gets quieter and quieter. And then that inner compass gets stronger and stronger naturally. And that's the stuff that's always like, I mean, I've been playing around with that for the past few years, but it's like seeing how crazy, like intuitive, like I almost want to say like intuitive weight training, right? Like these different things can do is like playing the experiments of just like, all right, listen to the gut. What's it saying? All right. How do I feel about that? Is my vibe good or bad? Like if, it, is, if it's not a hundred percent, yes, that's a hundred percent. No, you know, <laughs> like it's been so wild to experience. Like we've always had it. We've just overlooked it. Like. Exactly. It's, it's a hell yes or hell no. There's, if it's a, I don't know. That's a no. Sorry. Ooh. Well, how does your internal compass with the, those empath energies, how does yours, how does your body, how does your energetic body try to communicate to you? So it's really funny. So like the more, the deeper you get into this work, the more senses activate, right? So your empathic, yeah. it's like a, it's like, um, I'm like super into the fantasy world, but like, like with any, like any superhero or Harry Potter or whatever, the more you learn, the powerful, the more powerful you get, the more gets activated, right? Oh, yeah. So like Hermione, initially it was just like luminous where she could like light. Isn't yeah, this amazing? Yeah. And then, <laughs> And then she became like, whatever, minister of magic. And she became super, super powerful. Same as being an empath. So it yeah. used to be, um, I used to see like a white, white screen with like capital letter words. And then it would become a feeling. Sometimes mm. it's a voice. The last few days, it's been two words. I wake up every day and I'm like, okay, like what do I need to focus on today? Trust. Okay. Be open. Okay. Say yes. Okay. Two days ago, I was like, get outside. And I'm like, all right, fine. I'll go outside. <laughs> so it's about being open to allowing yourself to receive whatever comes through, however it comes through. Mm. Because you could have your soulmate, you could have the next career, whatever, literally at your door, right in front of your face, but you won't see it if you're not open and if you're not ready and if you're not willing and able to take aligned action. Ooh, aligned action. What do you mean by that? Okay, so... There's two parts to alignment, right? So when something's in alignment, it feels right. It feels easy. It feels light. It's in flow. It's with grace. And it's just yeah. like magic, magic, magic. Like everything just falls into place, right person, right time. And that's amazing. But where does that come from? Like where does alignment come from? There's a, there's like, we're co-creators. We're not just creators, right? So like universe, yeah. like you know, there, there's a massive divine source universe, whatever you want to call it. There's a massive energy around that that's helping and helping us and that's guiding us. So the other part of that is, creating so we actually get to choose what are you aligning to like what do you actually want that is right for your soul not your ego your soul because if it's coming yeah. from an ego space if you're, if you're trying to manifest about a million dollars and win the lotto chances are that's ego 100 right yeah if it's soul if it's if it's like okay well what do i really want to do i want to impact thousands of people around the world i really want to help people i want to help I want to help people realize that they're more than good enough just the way that they are. I want to help people realize that they are love. They don't have to seek love, but they are mm. love. They are joy. They are abundance. And that's an alignment because that feels really good. Well, how do I want to do that? Uh, you know, like I want to, I want to be an amazing podcast like this. I want to, I want to deliver workshops to many. I want to like, because then you, then you create from that space. And then from that space, like to take it even a step further, you set, you set really you set really clear boundaries mm. so what do i tolerate and what do i not wish to tolerate right because that's when you that's when you 
literally are paying for the ticket out of people pleasing land and you're doing it for you and your soul and not for everybody else or not for the miserable Oompa that are still living there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I vibe with that. I vibe with that. Well, in terms of these kind of like new beginnings and new transitions, how has this kind of lockdown transformed the way you've brought about healing to the people? Hmm. Um, I, I have a lot more international clients. So now I'm not oh, super cool. Guys that they're all over the world. Um, and like, I've always loved delivering. Like I love, I love, you know, workshops, being on stage, like online, face to face, whatever. But I definitely do a lot more online. And what I realize is that the biggest thing people are seeking now is connection. Mm-hmm. And what they what a lot of people are failing to see is it's not just connection with other people. Connection starts with being connected to yourself because when you're connected to yourself, that's when your light, like you said, like that's when your light, that's when your light gets brighter and that's when other people are magnetically attracted to your light. So you don't mm. have to try and find your soulmate tribe. Oh gosh, that resonates so true with these past few months. It's been crazy. It's been actually like mind blowing. It just never ceases to amaze me how magical and beautiful life is. And just how full of abundance it is when you yourself recognize, I too am full of abundance. I too am the love of this world, the light in this world. And it's that recognition where it's it's subtle, but like it's so powerful once you ra- you finally kind of fully dedicate yourself to it and exactly. nurturing that light. Yeah. And it's so simple, right? Like we just get to wake up every day and make a decision and say, I just get to be more of me. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, I love it. So speaking of tapping into the unlocked potential of people and just really being you, how is this new program unleashed? How did that come to fruition? Where did this come from? Like, what was the inspirations? What's the move? I want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my new group, my new group, I can't even speak. I'm so excited about this. Every time I do this, I'm like, ah! My new group <laughs> coaching program is called Unleashed and it is all about unleashing what's within you. It actually came from one of my clients. So one of my clients, she's like this, she's like a famous coach. She's a TEDx speaker. Like she's, she's really big. And she left me a testimonial and, and in it, she said, Alexis unleashes the beast in you. And I was like, I like that. I really like that because I feel like, especially as empires or especially as sensitive souls or spiritual people or whatever you want to call it, there is so much power that we are suppressing and repressing. It's like, it's the whole trash, you know, jam your put down analogy. Unleashed is all about helping you to unleash what is within you, your gifts. It's all about helping you to be yourself, a thousand percent yourself. It's all about helping you to let go of the crap, so pouring this out so that you can really, really step into receiving what you want. So you can really, you can really love, express, be, and trust yourself. Because mm-hmm. I feel like that's a big part that's missing in all this work. There's, I feel like we really, really need to learn how to trust ourselves because we can most definitely get through life, especially with the energy of today, just on intuition alone. But it's not just learning about your gut intuition, which is just, which is your survival intuition, right? A survival intuition is amazing. That's do or die. Like if your gut says no, no, do not walk down that alleyway. But it's learning about like what are all the subtle other intuitions that you get? What are all the subtle nudges that you get? What are like the the whispers or the the initial thoughts that you get whereby that are drowned out by your mind or your brain or your ego? Mm. How do you get to be more of you completely, fully, and really trust every single part of you? Because that's the only thing that you can trust. You can trust your ability to read your own energy, to feel your own energy, to feel your own body, feel your own emotions, release them, and then... And then also at the same time, like how do you distinguish yours from somebody else's? And then yeah. then like upping that up to another level, then how do you get to connect with somebody else's? And then how do you get to actually read them and help them? Knowing that not all your intuitive yeah. hints and guidance and nudges are for you. A lot of the time they're for somebody else. Oh, I love that. And I think that just goes to like the to really just demonstrate life really doesn't even start getting fun until you go into this inwards looking and start to awaken to your powers again and just the potential of what we are. And that's so that aspect of not everything that we're intuitively getting isn't always intended for you is so powerful. That just resonates so strongly with me where it's 
it's one of the most egoic things that we do is take everything that we experience and take it directly towards ourselves. But when we start getting into this realm of service unto humanity, we start to really, again, tap back into that interconnectedness and oneness energy. So that makes to me, it just makes perfect sense when you say like, yeah, you know, we tap in, we get stuff for other people and we just think it's us, but it's like, it's that identity that we have. Like you're not the body. It's a vehicle. It's a vessel. So, exactly. Yeah. And it's, and I think that like, that's, that's a blocking factor for a lot of people. And it's why they don't trust their intuition. It's why they don't actively follow it because they're like, well, you know, I did it and it wasn't right or whatever. No, that's, con- that's trying to control the process. It's not always for us. And it's not always about us. Like I remember one time I was at my friend's house and I was washing her, I was washing their dishes and I like, we like, we we're having a conversation. I know it stopped me conversation. I was like, Levi's in trouble and Levi's their dog. We went downstairs and he'd wrapped his, uh, he was like tied to a, tied to a, um, a pole because he had a cone on his head and he kept eating his cone because he'd just been desexed or new to whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and he'd wrapped, he'd wrap the, he'd wrap the leash so tightly around the pole trying to get free that he was about to choke himself. Wow. Like that had nothing to do with me or her, or anybody else, that was to save Levi, mm. right? The more, we, the more we give ourselves the power and the the more we give ourselves permission to just trust what comes through mm. without expectation, that's when it's so incredibly powerful because it could be for you. It could be for the homeless person on the street. It could be to save an animal's life. It could be for whatever. It could be yeah. for the million other people that are about to see this. Like I went through, I like, I've been posting content for a long time and like I got, there was a couple of weeks where I was just like, Oh my God, what is the point? Nobody's watching this. Nobody is liking this. Like, what is the point? Honestly. Right. Yeah. Do you never know who it's going to be for. Hmm. Like, I'll just get like an idea and I'll be like, I I have to do a video about this. Otherwise, I feel like, I feel like, I feel so constricted and I feel so unhappy if I don't. Because it's not for me. Mm. It's for someone that needed to watch it, that might never ever comment, that I'll never ever know. Yeah. But then I get like cool opportunities like this. It's like, hey, someone saw you and they wanted, you know, we should, we should do a podcast. Yes. Yeah. Right. (laughs) I saw the name. I was like, I don't know what it is, but yes. (laughs) Why not? Well, I think that's the coolest thing about this journey called life is, when we're in the moment, like in the eternal now, whatever it is that we're at in our point in life, it always seems so intimate and just so intense that this is the only thing we're ever going to experience. But when we take that step back and we really look at the whole thing, like film or, you know, cinema or adventure play out, we start to realize all the objective truths of it, where it's like, man, I needed to go through that to get to this point. I needed to go through that to get to this point. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things is seeing other healers like yourself just getting activated all around the same time. These past few years has been like the extra steroid boost for everybody. But like, it's just like, I've seen so many more people just like come to the this same eternal truth and ground of being that we all share in their own unique way. And that's why I love it. Cause I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like we're all coming home. Like, I don't know. I'm super hopeful for society seeing people like yourself, but I guess I would say this in terms of listening to this conversation could be really inspirational for a lot of people that are at that tipping point, but it could also be something that causes a little bit of apprehension and doubt because of the self worthlessness aspect. So how would you express to people and the listeners why they deserve love, why they deserve self-love, why they deserve this opportunity just to kind of just dance your dance and just be unapologetically yourself? I love (laughs) that. Unapologetically yourself. That's amazing. Okay. So I want to start by reframing two things. So the first thing is self-love isn't just about loving yourself because that's really freaking hard to do. If we knew how to do that, everyone would have done it already. And <laughs> loving me in the place that it is in right now, right? Like, like that drives me insane. Everyone's like, love yourself more. How the fuck do I do that? Like, tell me, because if I knew how to do it, then don't you think a lot of other people would know how to do it? And we wouldn't have all these miserable people in the world, right? So the way yes. I look at it is, <laughs> The first reframe I want to put out there is self-love is having the courage and confidence to be yourself. And nobody knows how to be you better than you. So just be you, boo-boo. Like, do what you want to do. Here's two two really easy ways to be yourself. The The first way is ask yourself, what is it that I really want to do? Go do that. The second thing is, what is it that I really want to say? Say that. And then in regards to self-worth is self-worth is realizing 
that re- self-worth is putting yourself first. Mm. Simple as that. Self-worth is making the conscious choice, the decision, the, the intention that I'm going to put myself first. And when I say no to somebody else, it means I'm saying yes to me. And that's okay. Woo-hoo. And if I'm tired, that's okay. If I feel like shit, that's okay. If I look like shit, that's okay. It's just choosing to put me first. And I have a lot of parents that come to me and they're like, yeah, but I've got kids and this and that. I'm like, okay, if you're not putting yourself first, if you're not listening and giving your your mind, body and soul what your mind, body and soul needs, you're not doing the yoga, you're not going on the bike rides, you're not eating healthy, you're not doing any of those things, what are you teaching your kids? Mm. Because they are your mini clones and they will grow up feeling, thinking and behaving in exactly the same way. Yeah. So we have to make time for ourselves. And health is the number one priority. Without health, we have nothing because we can't serve if our body vessel is breaking down. It's our home. If we don't look after it, where are we going to live? Oh, I have a lot of attitude. (laughs) I love it. No, I love it. And I just want to say, Alexis, thank you so much for coming on Creatives Chat. I'm going to have you stick around for the after show. But with that, listeners, tune in Monday for another amazing conversation as we continue and keep this ball rolling to goodness. Roll the outro. That concludes this episode of Creatives Chat. Thank you for watching. Join us every Thursday at 3.33 p.m. Pacific Daily Time as creative minds get together and chat about who knows what. View more episodes on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again to our sponsors for making this show possible. Thank you, We Are Storically, for your conscious human apparel. Shop online at wearehistorically.com. Hi, I'm Darius Wilrich. I'll teach you everything you need to know about playing jazz piano like a pro with my 12-week online video course and downloadable guidebook, Jazz Piano Pro Essentials. Enroll today at jazzpianopro.com. Thank you for joining us. Have a happy always. And subscribe to be notified of future episodes. Oh, yes. Yes.